Will Snoop Dogg smoke a blunt in front of BTS? Welcome to YouTube's favorite K-pop show, DK News. Danny Kim and David with COVID. And everybody's getting COVID in Korea. Okay, first off, K-Nets praise Will Smith and criticize Chris Rock over Will Smith's Oscar slap. And second, we have Luna's Chu going into legal battle with her label. And last but not least, the most random collab of the year, Snoop Dogg x bts is official but before we go on we have an awesome new product to show you at our brand naked soul the jeju soju glass this high quality premium soju glass has beautiful lines on its side resembling the ocean waves of jeju island made with handcrafted semi-crystal glass it has the imprints of jeju and pada or sea in korean at the bottom in hangul drink your soju in the classiest way possible with the jeju soju glass only available on nakedsoul.kr and it's great for a gift too uh, we have fast cheap and reliable shipping worldwide the first five people to use this coupon code down below will get 10 percent off their purchase check them out at nakedsoul.kr now on to the first Okay, are you still listening, David? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Okay, K-Nets are praising Will Smith and also criticizing Chris Rock over the Oscar slap. Will Smith slapping Chris Rock was probably the most washed <laughs> moment of the past week or so. During the 94th Academy Awards on March 28th, Chris Rock, the presenter of an award, uh, went up on stage and made a joke about Will Smith's wife, Jada Smith. Uh, Chris Rock said Jada looked like she could be in a G.I. Jane movie, referring to her shaved head. Now, Jada had recently told the public uh, that she had been feeling a lot of stress and anxiety about her hair loss that she's been suffering due to alopecia. Uh, this is a special condition that she has. Will Smith initially laughed at Chris's joke, but then Jada frowned and moments later will smith suddenly came up on stage and slapped the shit out of chris rock and told him keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth 10 minutes later will smith also won the grammy for best actor and said love will make you do crazy things i know this may seem like we're beating an already beaten to death horse right now but i just wanted to share the stark contrast between the reactions of the western audience and the korean public to the situation while most western viewers seem to find will smith's behavior a wild overreaction to a mild joke and actually praised Chris Rock for keeping it professional after receiving the slap to the face, Korean netizens are surprisingly praising Will Smith's actions and criticizing Chris Rock. So here are some comments. Chris Rock deserved it. While it's not okay to be overly protective of your family, he made fun of Will Smith's wife who had been suffering from hair loss due to a disease. Chris Rock's words will probably keep him shunned from the industry. What Chris Rock said deserved him getting beaten. Uh, will Smith is a real man. No one will blame him. This is what happens when you make fun of someone's pain. While you can blame Will Smith for using violence, I probably would have done the same. Just watch the video. Jada's face is frowning as soon as Chris Rock started making that joke. Could you have stayed calm when your wife's at the butt end of a joke like that? Will Smith's a nice guy for only giving him a slap. Meanwhile, Will Smith publicly apologized to Chris Rock on his social media on March 29th. I mean, the situation's kind of done. Everybody's talking about it still, but it is what it is. He slapped uh, Chris Rock. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. So what do you think are the reasons for these huge differences in the reactions between Korea and the West. I was very shocked myself because my initial reaction was exactly like- Oh, really? And there's also a saying in Korea, and I bet this is universal as well, never shit on people's families. Like you don't mess with families. Uh, there's a lot of movie references or like real life situations where two people get into a fight and they shit on each other. And then the last line is like, when someone starts to shit about someone's mom yeah. or like family, yeah. then the punch goes yeah. out. So I've, I've seen that a lot in elementary school or like middle school, high school happening. I know Americans uh, love their your, mo your mama joke. In Korea, don't ever say that. Yo mama jokes are not yeah. okay here. Don't talk about moms or dads or whatever. Uh, family is very sacred, I guess, in Korea. But I would, I would have to say it's kind of ironic. Here's my point of view. I feel like Will Smith's action itself was not out of anger from the joke itself. It was more to do with his 
accumulated frustration regarding how his family is portrayed and how he is portrayed thanks to uh, his family's actions through media because like you know his wife had a relationship entanglement with uh, his son's best friend which is <laughs> already like in Korea that would be probably more fucked up than talking about your your wife or your mom yeah yeah so the <laughs> so the diff one one of the biggest differences it was the lack of knowledge of that yeah I think there was not a Korea lot of context for Korean people so people didn't know mm -hmm. about uh, Will Smith's wife's mm -hmm. um, you know entanglement uh, thing. entanglement uh, I do have to applaud Chris Rod's professional yeah tempo, yeah because like he took it really smooth after that yeah blow, I was surprised and that was very impressive. I was very I was very impressed uh, he did not yeah. even flinch he actually tried to make it into right, a joke right too, and, uh, and and he got I slapped mean, yeah. hard <laughs> he yeah, got yeah, slapped yeah. hard it was kind of funny though like Will Smith slapping pose it oh. kind of looked you know I think, unnatural I think it's because like he's used to slapping in movies so he's like over oh, yeah, over yeah, yeah. playing the slap kind of like the follow through yeah, was yeah, huge yeah. anyway uh respect to chris rock and uh it's good that he's he's apparently not pressing charges he's like he's like uh keeping his cool about it so if chris rock press charges yeah. like his cool factor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and apparently now yeah. people are like um wanting to see his shows he's they're like selling out his shows and stuff Oh, so yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. like a very stark contrast to Will Smith, uh, yeah. how how he's viewed in Korea. Um, so I thought that yeah. was very interesting. And let's go on to mm. the next news. Snoop Dogg and BTS are collabing and it is official. Snoop Dogg said in a podcast in January that he had received a proposal for collaboration uh, with BTS. We get calls from from the biggest artist in the world. I got a group named BTS that's waiting on me to do a song with them right now. And I'm trying to figure out if I got time to do this shit. And they oh, that would be want me to do the video you and all kind of shit. BTS. Back then, fans were unsure whether the collab was actually gonna happen because it was in the early phase of discussion. But according to Billboard, Snoop Dogg officially announced the collaboration with BTS at the red carpet event of the American Song Contest. Snoop Dogg stated in an interview, I'm going to let BTS tell you about it. It's official like a referee with a whistle. I love that entertainment world. It's good music. It's a vibe. I make good music. BTS makes good music. What is this interview? What? What is he trying to it's say? Snoop. And we end up doing this. This is what it's all about. Bringing our worlds together. Okay, Snoop Dogg just brought world peace. Big Hit Music also released a short statement saying that they will share more details about the Snoop Dogg collaboration when they are confirmed. So I guess it's not confirmed but Snoop Dogg kind of confirmed it. Some say this collaboration with Snoop Dogg is totally random, I agree. While some say with anticipation that BTS always liked hip hop and Snoop Dogg. Actually, RM sang lyrics in respect of Snoop Dogg in Hip Hop Song Eja, Hip Hop File, uh, which was included in their first album, Dark and Wild. This kind of collab isn't very new to Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg, has worked with several K-pop stars in the past. He participated in Girls' Generation's The Boys' Remix version. Oh, really? I did not know this. I did not know this. <laughs> Me neither. Me <laughs> that, neither. that is the randomest collab ever. And, and yeah. then, of course, you guys know Sai's Hangover. Uh, he was featured in that. During his 2013 concert in Korea, he performed collaborative stage with 21. Oh, so he's, he's like got his feet pretty deep into K-pop. Reactions from the fans are diverse. Uh, most fans are of course excited and happy for BTS with this collab as Snoop Dogg is undeniably a legend in hip-hop. Some fans showed on the fans behavior uh, saying that Snoop's interviews seemed to make like BTS was love calling and that Snoop wasn't very interested initially. Some said jokes like, does this mean we can see BTS and Snoop uh, do the crib walk together? <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt that. Others were like, uh, why Snoop Dogg? Why not collab with some rising stars or currently relevant artists? Bam, bam, bam. Shots fired. Honestly, like this is exciting. At the same time, I don't really expect too much from this. Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. I really love like his doggy style, that era. Like he's, he's a 90s star icon. At the yeah. same time, he hasn't been relevant in terms of music. Like, he hasn't <laughs> been relevant in terms of music the past 20 years. He's been relevant as a public figure Whoa. and a celebrity. He's like, yeah. he's like a very influential figure. But at the same time, 
he's not like a no for his music the past 20 years if bts was like okay we have one hip-hop artist that we're gonna collab with next i don't know if snoop dogg mm. would have been my number one choice to be honest I, I don't think like a lot of people are looking forward to snoop dogg's next big hit i kind of agree with the comments saying like why is snoop so nonchalant about this collab um you know he doesn't f feel very excited about it. it just feels like what he did with Psy and stuff it's more like a fun project or like a, you know oh, let's just try it why not my question is a will they meet in person if they're gonna meet in person they're gonna do this when um they're in uh, vegas if that happens my second question is will snoop dogg smoke a blunt in front of bts okay what a relevant it is it is relevant because relevant. <laughs> snoop dogg smoking a blunt all the time he smokes Whoa. a blunt all the well, time. He's Snoop Dogg. So he's gonna smoke. As you said, he's, he's Snoop so he's Dogg. Gonna smoke. He's gonna do whatever. Yeah, he's he wants. gonna smoke. What will Hybe or BTS's reaction be? They're just gonna be like a little uncomfortable but natural at the same time. And and uh, probably if that picture or like something like that gets released oh, in the oh, press, oh, that would be bad Korea, PR. People, <laughs> that would be terrible. PR. No, it's not gonna be bad PR. No, people are gonna be like, oh, that's Snoop Dogg. That's like real hip hop. I, I think people there. are gonna be like, Snoop Dogg's canceled because you can't smoke in front of. I hope we see a blunt in the MV. Smoke weed every day. On to the next news some drama. Luna's Chu goes into legal battle with her label. On March 29th, Wikitree reported that Luna member Chu had recently gotten a partial approval by the court for her lawsuit against her label, Blockberry Creative. She had filed this lawsuit in December of last year to suspend her exclusive contract with the label. So she wants to get out. Uh, the court has partially approved. Uh, she's I guess technically not out yet. Murmurs about Chu's issue with her agency arose in September of last year as she appeared on her YouTube variety show and stated that she has yet to been paid by her company for her activities. This came to shock to many netizens as Luna was in their fourth year of activities and she had been a regular in major TV shows at that point as well as modeling in five major advertisements. A few weeks later, news of Blockberry Creative's financial trouble arose. The company was outed by industry insiders last year for not paying staff members and their outsourced workers. They've been going through some issues uh, internally. Netizens at that time suspected at least a large portion, if not all of Chu's earnings uh, were split between the members of Luna, uh, for they found it hard to believe that with the level of popularity and individual activities that she had been going through, she had yet to earn a single cent out of it. However, we cannot confirm these claims uh, regarding the specifics of the revenue share model. So uh, we don't know, but those are the rumors. While Blockberry Creative has yet to comment on Wikitree's reports of the legal battle, uh, netizens did find that they had recently trademarked Chu's name on February 4th, 2022, after the reported lawsuit had taken place. Chu is actually the only member of Luna to have her name trademarked. So I actually searched this up in the trademark registry. Literally, it's Luna and then it's Luna Chu and then Luna's Chu. Blockberry Creative only got Chu's name trademarks to, ma oh. uh, to make sure that she can't use it for the future. And it will make it definitely hard uh, for Chu to continue activities under Luna should she leave the company. Meanwhile, Chu has been continuing with her activities in Luna, appearing in Queendom, which just aired last night. It just started and we're going to do an after show. And she stated on the show, it was hard for me to see so many comments pitying for us regarding our company situation. I worried if I could continue Luna at all. I felt the other people were deciding for us what we had become. So that is the state we are at now. Speaking of Queendom, we have a watch party. We're gonna start very, very soon for Queendom uh, as soon as David gets out of COVID. And the link is down below. Come join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash DKDKTV. First of all, Blockberry's move on like, you know, trademarking her name and basically prisoning her. It's a very shady move, in my opinion. I, it's a it's a legal one and they're they're looking out for their own interest. I get that. But like, you know, just <laughs> trademarking just her right name, now, like that's... A, a month ago. <laughs> All this time, yeah, yeah, Luna's yeah, name, was, Luna itself was trademarked in 2006. Of course, I mean, like, that's when they debuted. Yeah, so they're basically, yeah. 
Yeah, they're basically showing a reaction to Chu trying to, you know, exit yeah. the group. Maybe this is an overstatement. Maybe it's not. But Chu is basically the one that's, you know, hard carrying the group. She's the bread earner right now. She's the most, um, and... uh, doing the most individual activities at the moment. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has the best uh, general public um, uh, attention to her. It must be very struggling for her and frustrating for her because like every cent she earns gets split into 12 no, we don't we don't know that yet we don't know like we can't confirm well that, that but... that's the norm yeah, yeah that's the norm like that's the norm for all girl groups all boy groups out there and that's what happened to snsd aoa yeah. and all whatsoever i guess that's what they sign up for and that they that's what they agree initially like but still like you know if this continues uh for I don't know years and like a long period you you start to doubt like you know what am i doing here you know oh. <laughs> the other and i i kind of get that feeling i oh, kind of get you where you have that is. feeling in dkdk DK tv <laughs> no 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 i can understand i can understand that feeling. oh you can understand you know <laughs> no oh my i'm gonna trademark dkdk DK tv david i think this is a issue that not just k-pop but like all like bands face if you divide it equally it's in your best interest to be successful as a team right even if i don't become a like a huge superstar if one of us becomes a huge superstar that's a plus for me right so i think it mm -hmm. kind of promotes that teamwork at the same time of course situations like this where one feels like they're doing all the work and they're not getting fairly uh, uh compensated might happen on the other hand, mm. if we do pay like for someone's individual work, then it becomes in their best interest, in that member's best interest, to do more individual work than teamwork. For the company and for the team itself, that might not always be a positive thing. It's like a double-edged sword, you know? Honestly, I can't say which system is better. It's not like it's because of this system that this issue is uh, ha happening. I would say it's more to do with Blockberry Creative just not making enough money. <laughs> That's why she's not getting paid. But then, like, I I'm guessing, like, uh, she's suing based on maybe, oh, the costs are unclear. I would assume, like, Luna's costs are very expensive. There's 12 people. Just to feed them would be, you know, astronomical per yeah. year. <laughs> you know, feeding yeah. and uh, uh, giving cl new clothes to them. That, that would be very, very costly. And in the meantime, what's ironic is BlackBerry Creative is actually launching a global audition for E. Dot is Hon Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's Luna. Boy. Luna dudes. Yeah, Luna boys. And, yeah. And uh, with this shit going on, like Chu looking at the situation, she's not getting paid enough. And then they're launching a boy version of them. I would get pissed too. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're like, they're not even paying yeah, us yeah. yet. And they're launching a new group. So there you go. That is it for today's DK News. Please be sure to join us uh, in the watch party for Queendom. Let's let's root for Luna. I want them to get paid. But we'll watch Queendom together on our watch party. Go to patreon.com slash DKDKTV. We also have the after show and other exclusive content. Other watch parties we've done in the past. And uh, David will be back next week. So uh, please expect him to be in the office again. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.